Good evening, everyone. This is Michael, and uh, we're going to work on the meditation today for attracting money for hierarchical purposes. It is a foundational factor, and uh, as Master DK has said, in many ways it's the crux of the whole difficulty in bringing the hierarchy forward and eventually uh, after they are established in the necessary planetary centers uh, bringing the Christ forward at the time that he deems correct to uh, reappear so that every eye shall see him it seems strange of course to many that the Christ is in need of financial resources uh, just the way uh, people are, but this has to be worked out by human hands and human feet. He is sometimes conceived as coming as an all-conquering hero uh, to, uh, let's just say, uh, overcome the forces of evil immediately and irresistibly and lead those who follow him into a period of peace and prosperity and happiness and so forth. Well, in one way, of course, that will happen. The era of peace is coming. Uh, it's symbolized as a thousand years of peace when Satan, uh, another way of looking at that uh, allegorically or symbolically, the, th the uh, three aspects of the personality the misleading mind and the glamoured emotions and the chaotic uh, physical activity, all that will be 
overcome by the power of the soul, by the power of the Christ force within us. So indeed, in that way, Satan will be bound for a thousand years, whatever that symbol actually means. Let's just hope that it is the greater part of the age of Aquarius, and certainly that part which <clears throat> has to do with Venus and Libra, both of these indicators, the sign of peace and the planet of peace in many respects. But <clears throat> he cannot come that way and humanity remain uh, in a relaxed and supine position. Humanity must, under his direction and under the direction of the hierarchy, find its way to do what is necessary. And, you know, the, otherwise a great opportunity is taken from humanity. It's all about our sense of values, you know, what do we really want? It seems such a simple question, but when you ask people what do you really deeply want, then emerges a picture of their values and the orientation of their astral body and of their mind and you can tell whether they are still in the grips of personality and materialism or whether the higher of the pairs of opposites the soul has really begun to do its work and is in fusing, infusing the personality energies. This is what is necessary. Humanity right now is the world aspirant, in some cases the world disciple. It must become the world initiate of the first degree. The heart must open. The birth of the Christ within the heart must occur. And you know, the amazing thing is that when the Christ does appear, after much preparation, so I, I figure there's at least a hundred years to go, at least, um, that it will be a signal that humanity uh, in its upper brackets has taken the first initiation and the entire kingdom will rise. But meanwhile, we have to demonstrate what our values really are. And will we spend the, uh, that symbol called money uh, in the direction of material satisfaction and you know that's the ways of spending it that way are legion you, you know you can go through all kinds of ways that satisfy the personality or will we spend the money for spiritual purposes so that we can bring the higher values the soul the hierarchy the Christ ever closer to humanity and so that spiritual occultism can win the day by the end of this particular century as uh, HPB Madame Blavatsky said it should and must. So it's a big responsibility uh, laid upon us. So often you know the people who are interested in these rather abstruse spiritual matters are not the ones that are out there on Wall Street, you know, uh, amassing large sums of money, huge sums of money. Occasionally, the philanthropist does appear, and uh, someone with uh, many, well, uh, many resources, but also infused by the energy of love, appears, and a true philanthropist begins to work for humanity. But we have esoteric values that we are trying to promote. And it is very important that humanity be educated along these lines. What is the hierarchy? Who is the Christ? What is the divine plan? What is the purpose uh, for which our planet came into being? Who and what is the planetary logos? What is the system of initiation? How does humanity really progress? So you can see that in order to educate humanity along these lines, considerable resources will be required. So it's up to us really, you know, 
our sense of values, what we value most. So, you know, do ask yourself, maybe make a list of four or five things which you value most and then uh, be truthful and um, examine what you have stated or written down and see if it's in line with transferring the flow of money, the flow of this symbol we call money, concretized energy, away from the darkness of materialism and into the channel that increases the love and the light and the spiritual will uh, within the human race. We'll have to judge that on our own and uh, a fair analysis is required. Okay, let's get into our meditation, Some, somehow realizing that whether what we contribute is a lot or relatively a little, everything counts, everything counts. And if, well, we're, we're seeing that even today in politics, you know, the many, many little donations are supporting the people that are not being uh, supported by the large uh, corporate interests. So many people, uh, little people in a way, financially considered, can make a big difference. And we have to take that to heart and realize that what we do with our resources really does count and is one of the first tests uh, applied by the soul to see where its personality really stands. So let's begin by examining some principles and asking ourselves some questions. attempt to realize the occult law that to those who give shall be given so that they can give again. vacuum is created in the giving and the resources flow in because they will be wisely distributed for the sake of the divine plan. It's like what Master Moria said, when have you ever become less through sacrifice? Some sacrifice is needed to distribute the great invocation, the problems of humanity, the ageless wisdom. Yes, some sacrifice is required, but when have we ever become less through sacrifice? Now we ask ourselves, in the quiet and in alignment with the soul principle, in alignment with that inner reality that dwells behind the scenes, within the scenes, we ask and answer truthfully to ourselves, if money is one of the most important things for spiritual work. What is the factor which at present is deflecting it away from the work of the hierarchy?
sure we'll all have our points of view on this, but it's hard to avoid those large concepts that we call ignorance and materialism. What is my personal attitude towards money? Do I regard it as a great and possible spiritual asset? Or do I think of it in material terms? Sometimes I think about whether money shall be spent for that which is real or for illusion. Materialism, of course, is illusion. What is my personal responsibility? in regard to money which passes through my hands. Am I handling it as a disciple of the Master's should handle it? Hercules, and we begin by fighting with the three material heads of the Hydra, the wrong use of sex, money, comfort, the second head, money, the wrong use, the materialistic use of money. What are the weaknesses associated with this second head of the Hydra? How can we overcome these weaknesses?
great war in the 20th century clarified many things and especially the sense of values sometimes people who suffered very much later when dealing with money would come to the conclusion that after all it's only money it's important but it's only money the important thing is where it is directed according to a spiritual sense of values Sometimes people, when thinking of another human being, say, what's he worth? What's she worth? And such an important psychological question, spiritual question, is wrongly answered in terms of money. That's how far it has gone. So the third aspect of divinity must serve love and the will which manifests the plan. Now we will ponder on the redemption of humanity through the right use of money. Every ashram has its objectives and if money could flow out of the darkness and into the light to support the objectives of the seven ashrams, it would be the right use of money. But these days it's often used this concretized energy is often used, as DK says, for purely material purposes and for the satisfaction where the individual is concerned of purely personal desires. So get a picture of that fact. But on the other hand, we could also visualize money as a great stream of flowing golden substance passing out of the control of the forces of materialism and into the control of the forces of light.
this too is possible and in fact vitally necessary and will come to pass it's just that the time equation is in our hands and now let us say the following invocative prayer with focused mental concentration and from a heartfelt desire to meet spiritual demands. O Thou, in whom we live and move and have our being, the power that can make all things new turn to spiritual purposes the money in the world. Touch the hearts of men everywhere so that they may give to the work of the hierarchy that which has hitherto been given to material satisfaction. The new group of world servers needs money in large quantities. I ask that the needed vast sums may be made available. May this potent energy of thine be in the hands of the forces of light. So we have confidence that this will occur and we do whatever we can in our own little ways to bring that day of fulfillment closer. And then we visualize the work to be done by those groups which claim our present allegiance, any group which you know is attempting to carry out the hierarchical plan. creative imagination and by an act of the will we see untold and unlimited sums of money pouring into the hands of those who seek to do the master's work
then we say aloud and with conviction and emphasis really realizing what we're saying he for whom the whole world waits has said that whatsoever shall be asked in his name and with faith in the response will see it accomplished and we remember at the same time this statement brought home to us by Paul the initiate faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen Now, we ask money specifically for, and we will say, I ask the needed money for, and then you will name the groups, the projects, whatever specifically you would like to uh, support with your resources, with your heart, with your soul, with your encouragement. We can't find every worthy project, but we can focus on a few that we know is really attempting, really are attempting to do the Master's work. And uh, I'm remembering what Master Moria said, it is a joy to do the Master's work. And so we say, I ask for the needed money for And I can demand it because from the center which we call the race of men let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. in your creative imagination you prepare to give your offering to the Christ on a weekly basis it's money it's time it's attention to his work 
as the Redeemer of humanity. And then focusing on the great Lord, seeking as close a relationship with him as we can, we say, we have gathered in your name, Lord Maitreya, be with us. And we offer in our imagination the money we have saved during the previous week to advance his work, the work of the spiritual hierarchy, the work of the initiates, disciples, and aspirants who seek to see the divine plan manifest on earth. careful consideration of our own responsibility to the divine plan. It's different for every individual, every group. So we plan our weekly financial cooperation with the hierarchy, with the Christ. And as the Tibetan says, be practical and realistic and know that if you do not give, you may not ask for you have no right to evoke that which you do not share. We attempt to feel true love sweeping through us and we have the fixed intention to express this love to everyone we may contact. It is the great attractive and selfless agent in world affairs.
humanity needs so much to understand the right use of money. We sound the Om three times, precipitating love into the worlds of the threefold personality. Thank you everyone for being with us this evening here, or whatever time it is for you. We're supposed to do this, of course, on Sunday morning, but since we do it together, we can't all be Sunday morning. But it's important to keep our sequence going. The conference is coming up, and there'll be a little break then because of how extremely busy it is, but I'd surely love to invite all of you to attend the conference in person. It's in Chandler, Arizona, and well, I just don't know anyone who has come to conference who has not left greatly uplifted and informed and empowered <clears throat> for the coming year of work. So I hope to see you there, to your hopes to see you there, we all, uh, with the Moria Federation and the USR and SRI uh, and the Blue Rose Sisterhood, we all hope to see you there at the conference. Our next ASK program will be on Wednesday, we'll be on the morning schedule, 6 a.m. And the equinox is coming up, the Aries equinox. It is uh, spring up here in the north, and it's autumn in the Antipodes, you know, down in Australia and New Zealand and so forth, south of the equator. But it's the Aries energy, and we always start the spiritual, astrological year with Aries. So there'll be quite a few broadcasts and webinars. Of course, the exact full moon moment will be broadcast. Two of you will do that. I'll do the pre-full moon. And there is the sacred pentagram approach. And of course, the equinox approach are so close, just four hours apart. The ingress and the actual full moon in the area is just four hours apart. It's a tremendous emphasis, so we hope you will be with us. Meanwhile, our, our thanks for your presence. And many blessings, lots of love from both of us, from all of us, and we'll be seeing you. Hopefully at conference.